And that new coalition will have its first face-to-face -face meeting with Europe's leaders when the European Council meets next month. The question is, what's next for Greece? Joining me now is Katerina Soku. She's the Washington correspondent for the Greek Daily Paper. Kater, uh, Kati Marini, thank very you good. very much. Um, welcome to the show. We've talked about Greece a lot, and, and this is another chapter in Greece history, so to speak. How important is this, and should we worry? It is an important change for Greek politics. The left, for the first time, is in power. And uh, this um, will have uh, an effect of um, upsetting some markets for some time, I guess. But at the same time, it has an effect of uh, uh, promoting anti-austerity throughout Europe. This is an important message that uh, uh, Europe is getting today. Here, here's what gets me, OK? And if I could, I, I'd talk to all those folks who are against these bailout packages. The rules of the bailout package helped get Greece back on track to where they are today. I know the economy isn't booming, but they are expected to show a little growth. So the austerity was a temporary pain, if you will, and they're now on, on the route to hopefully something much better. Do the citizens not see it that way? I mean, or, or do they just simply say, look, we, we don't want to do this anymore and, and we want it to stop? I, I, that, that's what's mm -hmm. confusing, I think, a lot of us who are watching from the outside. Well, the thing is, you know, num numbers are doing better. The people are not yet. So it will take some time for unemployment, which is 25 percent, to, to fall, especially among the young who are the biggest supporters of Syriza, the unemployment rates are 60%. So for them to see progress, it will take a few more years. And during that time, the austerity, the tax rates, you know, they, they keep, uh, they keep uh, rising or staying up. So this is what gets people and... Uh, they're, they're, they're angry. They're, they're angry because either they're not working or they don't have any money or they basically blame the government, yes. essentially, right? And this has been happening for five years now. So, so the, the anger is amassing. It, it's, it's amassing. I, I suppose that's understandable. Um, Cyprus, though, he has, he has a lot on his plate as well, right? Mm -hmm. He really can't bust out of the euro, as some are saying that he's going to do. He's going to just destroy the euro and, and jump out because that would annihilate the mm -hmm. Greek economy. I'm sure deep down he knows that. In reality, what he probably could do at this next meeting next month is maybe renegotiate one or two or some of the terms, which the IMF and World Bank have already said that they're open to at least discussing. If he gets that, can that be considered a victory for him? Well, to begin with, he was elected prime minister because uh, he managed to persuade the Greeks that he won't take the country out of the Eurozone. So this is his mandate, to keep Greece into the Eurozone while tackling and trying to get rid of the harshest face of austerity. So this is uh, one aspect that uh, he will try to keep. At the same time, the austerity that uh, he's trying to, um, to lighten will be in, um, I guess, um, some um, tax uh, rates or uh, maybe uh, negotiate the debt. Of course, the Europeans, we heard them today saying that, uh, you know, the debt is not, uh, is not on the table yeah. right now, but I'm sure it will be in the near future. I think one of the things that, the, as the global investors are watching this show, probably the thing that's worrying him the most, and by the way, for you guys watching, when the announcement first came out, the, the, the Dow futures were down over 100 points, and today we, we closed positive. Mm -hmm. And so somehow investors must, must sense that it might not be as bad as we first made it out to be. Because the real concern was, well, what would Spain do? What mm -hmm. would France do? What would all these other countries who also had to face austerity programs, mm -hmm. arguably different forms of them, they could come out and complain too and say, hey, wait, I don't want to do austerity either. That would completely destroy Europe, would it not? Well, that's a danger that um, the Europeans are taking into account when they're deciding how to deal with Tsipras, and it is something that it might actually make, it, uh, make life harder for him negotiating, because right now the contagion danger is less than it used to be in 2010 or 2012. So 
right now, the, the Europeans feel, and with the ECB taking this action last week uh, of buying government bonds, they feel that they can protect the other countries from a possible contagion of Greece exiting the Eurozone. So that might actually complicate the negotiations because if they feel, I don't personally believe it, this is the case, but if they feel that contagion is no ro yeah. longer a problem there, they might actually be harsher uh, towards Tsipras than what Tsipras can take. So I'm going to end this with something positive. Mm -hmm. The last I checked, we were tourism numbers in Greece were doing pretty good. Yeah, it was a record year. So that's got to help the economy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, there's a little momentum, right? There's good news for Greece, is there not? Yes. The economy started growing. Uh, we have a surplus after uh, many decades of uh, deficits. And uh, for the first time, there is a uh, potential for Greece to grow sustainably. Now, what uh, the new government wants to do is tackle tax evasion, bureaucracy, corruption. These are things, the establishment that has been uh, uh, associated with cronyism. So these are things that could actually send a positive message to investors. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with a little help from Europe, I think that Greece can well, uh, go back on the track. We're, we're out of time, but uh, at least we ended it on a positive note. Katarina, thank you. Thank you very much for your time.